How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be working on the, um, this is the steak knife. We're going to be working on the sheath for the steak knife. So, uh, I got most of my leather cut out here. I'm just, uh, getting everything ready and we're going to be doing some, uh, stenciling on it. We're going to, uh, be using the basket weave. We're going to use the tiny basket weave this time the real small basket weave so I'm just getting this all ready and then we're going to uh, get to getting this thing put together Okay, we have our center piece. This piece here will go sandwich in between these two pieces right here, which will give us a place for our blade to sit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the sheath, part of the sheath that needs cut, and I'm just using the top piece as a template. I'm going to mark it out and get it cut. Okay, now we got all three of our pieces cut. We can start on this piece here. This is the piece we're going to be doing the um, basket weave. I'm going to try to do a little bit different than the other ones. So, uh, see how I do this. Check it out. See what you think. Okay, so we got pretty much everything done up here we're gonna go ahead and start marking this around where our stitches are gonna go and these little stitching wheels they sure make it nice they really do now any of you guys out there that are wanting to start doing the leather no I will leave a link to some kits on Amazon like a starter kit and uh, I think that that would be the best way to get started I mean you don't have to continue using them but it'd be nice to just use them to see if that's exactly what you want to do because this this stuff could get pretty expensive to do and if you decided not to you're gonna have a lot of money wrapped up in tools I do believe I would just get a cheap set and uh, use them to see if you like doing it or you enjoy doing it because I would hate to get stuck with a whole bunch of them tools and uh, you know it just cost a lot of money to uh, for the tools but if you get it in a kit I think it's a lot cheaper so I will leave a link in the description below for the uh, a starter kit for the tools for leather. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to use a stitching wheel. Uh, this will give me an idea where all my stitches are going to go. And uh, we'll start doing the basket weave and stuff after we get all this on. Okay, we're going to just use this uh, anvil to beat our uh, workout on. I'm going to pick me up one of them little plates that I can beat on. I think it would be a lot better. Uh, so what I'm going to do on this one is uh, we're going to do some basket weave, but I had, I had bought uh, some different stencils, and I've just been trying them out here and there. And we do have an oak leaf, which we're going to put an oak leaf on this little uh, an oak leaf and then a couple acorns so we're just gonna get these about where we think we want them try to get them in the middle here and that's a pretty nice looking little oak leaf I could get it in there a little deeper And that 
looks pretty nice. Now I got some little acorns. I thought I'd throw a couple little acorns on here. And uh, I think they're going to look pretty good in there. Little acorn there. And maybe a little acorn up this way. And that looks pretty good. You guys see that okay? That don't look too bad. Now once we start doing our basket weave on here, it should really start to look better. Now we're going to get ready to mark out for our basket weave. And I'm going to do a pretty aggressive slope on this. So we're just going to mark this pretty aggressive. Like so. And that's the line that we're going to follow with our uh, basket weave. And I'm going to start just about in the middle and keep my stamp lined up right with that line. Just like so. Now this is hard for me to see. I don't know why it's so hard. But it is. I'll start on this side. Okay, all of our stenciling is done now. And I don't think I did too bad for the small stencil. Seems like the small one was a little bit harder than the other one, but I think I did okay. I think it looks all right. All right, we got our basket weave on there. I don't think it looks too bad. I'm still uh, getting the hang of everything here. But I think I'm going to use this little guy and go around the top of this to kind of put a little border around it. I think I could do three of these across here. I'm going to just get them equaled out here. Put that one in the middle. One on each side. One like so. Cut that one right there. Then one more right over here. Catch the edge of that one. So that looks pretty good. Not too bad. Okay. So that'll be our uh, sheath. I don't think it turned out too bad. Not perfectly straight on there, but it is handmade, so that's our sheath. That's going to be the front of our case, our leather sheath for our uh, steak knife. Okay, while this leather is still a little bit wet, what I'm going to try this time is I'm going to try to uh, put some dye on the leaf. And on the acorns. Now, I normally, when I'm working with this stuff, make one big old mess. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the veins in the in the uh, leaf, and we're gonna paint all the veins. Now you probably won't see much difference in this yet. 
but I'm going to do those veins a few times because I want them to kind of stand out. And this is just a just a normal brush, little brush, just a teeny little brush. I gotta watch this dye. I normally get this dye everywhere. I've spilled it on my table, and it is pretty bad stuff. So, and I'm just using what's spilled up in the lid. I'm not using any out there. And we're gonna do the whole acorn here. Because we want the acorn and the leaf to stand out. A little bit from the rest it's like painting I guess but you don't want to put a lot on your brush because it'll soak into the rest of the leather around it so I'm just putting a little bit on there and I'd rather go over it a few times that way uh, it doesn't make a mess now we're gonna go over that leaf those veins in that leaf again This is going to make those veins a little bit darker than the rest when we uh, dye the whole thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there and dye that the bottom of the acorn only. I'm going to get it a little bit darker than the top. Now I don't know if this will work or not, but we're going to try it. going to do the leaf one more time we should be getting pretty close to where we could dye the whole leaf So we'll let them sit on there and kind of dry up a little bit and then we'll do the whole leaf one more time. See I missed a little spot right there. Okay we're going to take our time and go over the whole leaf this time. And we're just on the raised part of the stamp. Trying to. Okay, that's all we're gonna do. I'm gonna let that set and dry okay. And then uh, we're gonna get to putting this sheet together. Okay, we got this piece done now. So we're gonna start working on this piece here. We need to find out where we need to bend this so we can have it for our uh, belt. And uh, if we wanna trim any of this up, we wanna get to trimming it now. Like if we don't want this as wide up through here, which I don't think I'm going to keep this as wide. 
So I'm going to work on thinning this down and getting it bent over and then we're going to sew it down here. So what I've done here is <clears throat> I'm going to thin this sheath out as it goes up. So I cut one piece, marked it and cut it, flipped it over, stuck it on the other piece of the paper and with it folded I should be able to open this up, lay it on this sheath and then cut that out and that should make my uh, how my handle is going to work. You can see how that, or way the, the where you're going to put it on your belt, you know. I just wanted to thin this down just a little bit to make it look a little different than other ones. So we're going to trace this out and go ahead and cut these pieces of leather out, these four pieces here. Okay, now we got our uh, piece of leather cut the same as the paper. We're going to go ahead and wet this down real good because we want to bend this. And like I said before, I learned from my mistakes. I bent one of these and um, <clears throat> it was really dry. The leather was really dry and it actually broke it. So we're going to wet it real good where we're going to bend it. Front and back. Let it soak in there good. That way it don't break that leather. What we're going to do, we're going to get this bent in the shape we want it, and then we're going to go ahead and stitch this across. Okay, you can see how I did my stitches. Now I'm putting these stitches below the surface of the leather that way um, when you put the knife in and out it won't catch those stitches and I'm gonna put two rows of stitches on here because I'm not gonna put any rivets in this they're just gonna be stitching that's it so I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out and we're gonna get this set up and go ahead and start stitching this piece right here okay we're ready to stitch we got our little stitching vise up here and I'm telling you guys I really like the stitching vise now everything works so much easier it's basically uh, easier on my hands I don't have to worry about uh, holding this I can just open it up with the spring in there which is really neat uh, so it worked out really well so anyhow we're gonna go ahead and get this thing stitched together I'm going to start off with that first row up there. We're going to put two rows, like I said, because I wasn't going to do any type of uh, uh, rivets in this thing. We're just going to use the, the thread to hold it into place. So, uh, couldn't I don't think I could get this vise any better, to be honest with you. I like how it's set up, how it works. Works really good. So, we're going to go ahead and stitch it up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get this, um, these all glued on here. And um, I just took a little sandpaper and kind of roughed this edge up around here a little bit. Then wiped it off. So we're going to go ahead and get some of this leather glue. Make sure we know where it's going to start and stop. And we're going to go ahead and glue this guy together. Okay, I'm just going to clamp that thing and let it set and let it dry real good. Put something on it to let it weight it down so it dries. And then we'll get it uh, stitched up. This is going to be a beautiful sheath when we get it done.
Okay, what I've done now, since we got it sewed, I wet this part of the sheath and stuck the knife in there because the knife, the roundness of the round knife is going to push that leather out. So we're going to put it down in there like that. And we're going to let that set there and dry and it's going to take the shape of the the guard on the knife. It's a lot easier to do it this way and let it set. <clears throat> That's what we're going to use to hold the knife into place, this piece here. Okay, you can see this is pretty much starting to take the shape now of that knife. So when you put the knife in there, it's not going to be real hard to get in and out. I put one of these little straps. What did I do with it? Right here. I wrapped one of these little bungee straps around it to hold it tight so it would kind of take that shape. So now we're going to go ahead and put this strap on. We're going to figure out where we exactly want this. And we're going to get this strap mounted on here. Okay, I think our sheath is almost done. All we got to do is take it out to the belt sander and sand this down. We'll sand it all down real good, get it cleaned up, and we'll use a slicker on this. And uh, we're going to use the antique uh, saddle tan. I'm going to use this. And this is the lighter color. Remember I had the darker color we put on the chef's knife. We're going to put the lighter color on the steak knife. But uh, meanwhile we're going to have to get this out there and get this on the belt sander and get this cleaned up nice. Now I put my little piece on here and I use two rivets. I put two rivets in here to hold that into place. And it, it looks... Uh, when you look at it, it looks crooked, but when you put it together, this is a right-handed sheath. It's going to fit perfect on your uh, for your thumb to crack the knife open and pull the knife out. So I think it turned out really nice. Okay, we're pretty much done with the sanding, but I did a boo-boo when I was sanding. I wasn't paying attention to this, and I hit that sander right there. You can see it right there is where the hit sander hit. So I'm going to see if I could do something with that without changing that out. I'm going to try to figure out something <clears throat> to kind of hide that. But we did get it sanded down pretty good. It could have went a little bit more on this side. But I can hand sand that. But we got the most of it off. So now what we want to do now is I'm going to take this little edging tool. And we're going to go right down along the edge. And we're going to kind of dress this up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. So I'll get to sanding on this a little bit more and I'll figure out what I'm going to do with this thing right here. I don't know. I might be able to stamp that. Maybe put some decoration or something on there maybe to kind of hide that. Or do I just leave it alone? I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll think about it while we're sanding. Alright, to compromise, I was trying to hide that little scuff mark there. What I did is I took a stamp and went across it and then did this side a little bit. I think that look okay. Kind of hit it pretty good. So, and we just cut that edge just a little bit more. It don't look too bad. I think that'll be okay. It's definitely going to be a little different. Right over here is your scuff mark right there. That's that little place where I hit it with the sander. But I think it'll be okay. Gives it a little bit of a, a look to it.
Okay, our stain there is on there. I'm going to put a little bit of this saddle soap over the edge of this and then we're going to do we're going to use our slicking tool and we're just going to go ahead and start slicking this down so we can get this finished up here. Okay, this is the saddle soap that I'm using on the, uh, I use that for this, do my slicking, you know, to use the slicker. And you can also put it on the sheet too. And then I use this uh, gel, antique gel. This is the uh, saddle tan uh, antique gel. And then uh, pretty much all the stuff that I used on this, I'll try to leave a link in the description. I used the cement to glue the sheet together. Uh, I'm going to be using some sheen on this too. When I'm done, I'll use this sheen. Okay, there's our sheath all finished. I think it turned out really nice. All we got to do now is find a stake so we can carve into it. And this thing is very, very sharp. It's sharp enough it will shave your arm, that's for sure. So I will give the blade and the, the knife another good buffing because we've been handling it a lot. But that handle, man, that really turned out nice. That thing really turned out nice on that knife. That's it. Okay, this knife is finished. You see it turned out pretty nice. There's the sheath. There's only one thing left to do with this knife. Okay, the only thing left is to cut a steak. To see how it cuts. Oh my, look at that. This thing is literally razor sharp. That is a beautiful steak too. And that's on our um, homemade cutting board that we made. Mm. So Julie um, made me up a baked potato and some broccoli. And this is really good. So I'm going to go ahead and set this thing over here. I just thought it looked good on that cutting board. Hmm. All right, we're gonna finish our steak. Our steak knife sheath is all finished. I think it turned out really nice. Right at the end of the video here, I'll leave a couple close-up pictures of the sheath and the knife. And for now, we're gonna to get to eating our steak. Uh, this has been a great little uh, build for me. And I've made, this is the ninth knife that I've made so far. Um, so this knife, I'm going to sell this knife. Uh, I just haven't figured out exactly how yet. But I would like to sell it by letting everybody bid on the knife. And the highest bidder would take the knife. Uh, I'm not sure how many knives I want to sell. But uh, this is a beautiful knife. And I'd like to recover some of the money I've been putting into the garage to build the knives. And this might be one way that I can do it. So, I would like to tell everybody, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment if you'd like. Till next time. I'm going to sit here and finish my steak.